On this edition of Freedom Journal Iraq, Iraqi security forces uphold security after Georgian troops pull out, and Iraqi training soldiers in Kirkuk get over new obstacles. Those stories and much more on today's FJI. Hello, I'm Airman First Class Priscilla Christensen. Welcome to this edition of Freedom Journal Iraq. Maintaining security in the Wasit province is a top priority for Iraqi security forces. The 32nd Iraqi Army Brigade took over operations in the region when word broke of the 1st Georgian Brigade's redeployment to attend to the conflict in their home country. Soldiers from the 2nd Battalion, 20th Field Artillery Regiment are partnering with the IA soldiers at checkpoints and patrol bases in Wasit. 24 hours after the news of the Georgians' pullout, Iraq developed a plan of action to hold security in Wasit previously occupied by the 1st Georgian Brigade. Not, no, not to, not we believe to, as the Iraqi government that we can fill the vacancies caused by the redeploying or withdrawing Georgian forces. The Iraqi forces are in a situation that allows them to take the place of any withdrawing force. The relationships fostered by the 32nd IA military training team allowed Iraqi and coalition forces to execute a plan rapidly. An Iraqi training base in Kirkush is getting a makeover with new infrastructures and rebuilt ranges. Army Staff Sergeant Mike Daly shows us how the new additions are making a difference to the soldiers training there. The Kirkush military training base may be on the calm end of a desert east of Baghdad, but it's anything but quiet here. <laughs> Iraqi soldiers, or Janud, are hitting the new obstacle course with gusto. It's part of the new division training center here. This is one of several ranges which opened recently and is already having an effect on the trainees. The first day we took them to the obstacle course, they were really intimidated by it, getting over some of the obstacles. You could actually see their, their confidence grow. The amount of confidence it gives them going through those, those things and, and accomplishing them is, is added to their motivation to do a better job everywhere else. That enhance their talking character so they would uh, be able to fight and defeat all the terrorists. This shoot house is also part of the expansion. It's hidden among the giant berms put in place to separate the ranges. Infrastructure improvements include shaded learning areas, fencing, and more available water on the ranges. <laughs> Some of the Janu claim they have already mastered the obstacle course. They also claim they're in good physical condition. You tired? Right. Seven? No. 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 I can do it in like three or four times. From the Kirkush Military Training Base, this is Army Staff Sergeant Mike Daly. The base is one of the busiest in Iraq and trains soldiers from the Iraqi Army 5th Infantry Division and also recruits two separate training battalions. Coming up, how a soldier uses a famous toy icon to bring joy to an Iraqi family. Here's your raid report. Coalition forces captured a special group's criminal during operations in Diyala province. The wanted man is suspected of being the weapons and finance facilitator for a criminal ring in that area. Iraqi National Police seized a munitions cache in the Al Samari Mosque in the Karada district. The cache consisted of four Iranian rockets, five rockets of unknown origin, and three warheads. Iraqi security forces detained 14 suspected terrorists and criminals in operations throughout Iraq. Iraqi Special Operations Forces detained five suspected Islamic State of Iraq cell members on a local warrant in Mosul. Iraqi Army soldiers discovered a large weapons cache in Anbar province. The cache was buried in an underground container and consisted of mortar rounds, rockets, missiles, and artillery propellant. And that's your raid report. I'm Petty Officer Patrick Gilley. Here are the latest Operation Iraqi Freedom headlines. The Iraqi government said it hopes to have 60 foreign embassies opened in Baghdad by 2009, including seven Arab embassies due to the security and diplomatic improvements. The Congressional Budget Office reports the military's dependence on contractors is unprecedented. The report also states the price of contracting is equal to the cost of recruiting, training, and outfitting military equivalents. A Chinese firm has begun construction on a thermal power plant in southern Wasit. The contract is reported to be worth $924 million, 
and the plant is expected to produce 1,320 megawatts of electricity. An Iraqi government spokesman said Iraq and the U.S. have agreed on many issues regarding the security agreement and that the withdrawal of the U.S. forces will depend on security and stability in Iraq. Those are your headlines from around the region. I'm Airman First Class, Shaylin Jordan. Many children in Iraq don't enjoy the same luxuries as American children. Airman First Class Shaylin Jordan shows us how one soldier gave a family with six girls living in the international zone in Baghdad a special treat. Staff Sergeant Lee Airy from the 45th Infantry Brigade Combat Team of the Oklahoma Army National Guard works for the Joint Area Support Group Central in Baghdad. And part of that job includes visiting some of the families living in the international zone. On one occasion, she met a family with four girls, all who like Barbie. This gave her the idea to dress up as Barbie and give out Barbie dolls and Barbie clothes to children living in the IZ. You know, we come over all the time and uh, we bring them stuff, but I think this is something different. Or I hope they think it is too. I mean, you know, I don't know the impact it's going to have, but if anything, I mean, it was just one good day in a sea of many. At the Princess Barbie pizza party, the girls received Barbie dolls, stickers, nail polish, and all sorts of girly goodies. The mother was very thankful that the soldiers took the time to come visit her family and play with the girls. This uh, international zone is a restricted uh, area and uh, family can't come here, so they, they make it up for that. They are just like uh, their family, so they feel not alone. <laughs> the girls of this family were especially grateful to Sergeant Airy for the special treat of her time and bringing a smile to their faces. Airman First Class Shaylin Jordan, Baghdad, Iraq. Iraqi Army soldiers are taking on more training from coalition forces as they prepare to lead more security missions. Army Staff Sergeant Desiree Wright takes us to Makhmunia, where Iraqi soldiers are hitting the streets and the books. Coalition forces train Iraqi Army soldiers in route clearance operations in Mahmoudia, Iraq. The headquarters and headquarters companies, 17th Iraqi Army Division troops, enjoy their first day of hands-on training after completing three weeks of classroom training from soldiers of Alpha Company, 3rd Special Troops Battalion, 3rd Brigade Combat Team, 101st Airborne Division. This week-long portion consists of riding along as observers as well as conducting route clearance missions in a combined convoy of both Iraqi Army and Coalition Forces equipment. We uh, set up mock lanes for them to use their uh, badgers and uh, also the other equipment, the, uh, what they call the Scorpion, is our Husky, and uh, got them to use it. Day after day, I build up you know, my soldier. Love me in this, in this room and really like to, to, to listen, listen up to the American instructions. And day after day, find out my soldiers, you know, keep looking for just like more and more formation. And yesterday, all my soldiers came to my office and told me, hey, sir, talk to the American side. Today, I was doing it in the real, outside work, to be at the real, not just formation or something. From what I saw, the gunners were doing the right things, the trucks had good spacing. You guys did a good job. They're definitely uh, learning, and they'll, they'll be able to pick it up and take off with it. It's a, uh, it's a needed step, and it will let us uh, you know, close this, this fight out. The Rakhassans are currently transitioning their responsibilities to the 17th Iraqi Army Division. Reporting from forward operating base Mahmoudia for the 3rd Brigade Combat Team, 101st Airborne Division Rakhassan, I'm Army Staff Sergeant. Desiree Wright. And that wraps up this edition of our program. Be sure to log on to mnf-iraq.com where you can learn all about the progress coalition forces are making throughout the country. If you have story ideas, we'd love to hear them. Just email us at fji at iraq.centcom.mil. From all of us here at AFN and Freedom Journal Iraq, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. <laughs>